world's most powerful naturally aspirated bead engine production card. So this is a banner and an honor that we, we uh, latch on to with uh, great relish. Uh, the fact that we're able to make an engine that makes 670 horsepower. Uh, the next closest engine was a Mercedes 6.2 liter, made about 622 horsepower. I think it was from 2017. Uh, so this is by a wide margin. It's probably gonna be the most powerful High volume, higher volume production engine in the world uh, with everything moving towards electrification. The 670 horsepower is probably a record for the stand for a long time. Flat plane crank. Um, why do we choose a flat plane crank? Flat plane cr crank, uh, it does give it, the engine a different sound, a different sound character. There's no doubt that Ferrari sound unique. It's a staccato picket fence type of sound. Uh, unlike the small block, it has thunder. Uh, and I happen to love the, the classic cross plane planks crank small block sounds, uh, that thunderous sound, uh, and very unique to a cross plane. Uh, but we didn't choose, contrary to popular belief, we did not choose the flat plane crank for the noise character. Flat plane crank gave us better volumetric efficiency. And the reason why is that each intake stroke uh, on the engine, you can see up here, it fires and then ingests air from bank to bank. Uh, thunder, then this cylinder, and back to the cross plane crank, It'll do the same thing, but then there's two cylinders on the same bank that uh, take an intake stroke right after each other, and that hurts volume metric efficiency. For LT6, we wanted nothing holding back on power, so cross plane crank was a, a natural evolution to try and improve volume metric efficiency. One of the bad things about cross plane crank is it shakes like a paint shaker. Uh, horizontal shaking forces are horrendous; they're so difficult to deal with. Uh, as an example, Ford, they did a flat plane 5.2 liter V for a number of years, and uh, they had a, a, web, a story on the web where the oil filter actually spun off the engine uh, from the shaking forces. And we thought, wow, that's pretty, pretty uh, hilarious. We would never make that mistake until we made that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so we had one of our first engines, and uh, these engines are really expensive in the prototype stage, hundreds of thousands of dollars for one engine. And uh, I think it was engine number two was on the dyno and everything's going well and all of a sudden loses oil pressure and grabs all the bearings and the engine failed. And well, what the heck happened? We were in the cell, look in the cell, the oil filter is on the ground. It's on the floor. And well, that, darn it, I guess uh, somebody forgot to tighten it. Uh, so we, the next engine we tightened it, made sure it was really tight. We put some safety wire on it and put a camera on it. And ran the engine up to speed again, you could see it start to rotate. <laughs> so, then we realized, oh, well, this is not going to be easy. Uh, so for five years, just working on all the vibration, uh, all the different issues with uh, threading of connectors, little electrical connectors, fuel injectors, um, coils, uh, those connectors, uh, they will start to wear and fret from the vibration of the engine. And then we had intermittent connections, we said engine codes, and then you can actually get damage and create emission if the coils, uh, the coil connections. So it was a, a, a fair to deal with vibration. Uh, the good news for you, we're gonna buy a Z06, is you will not know it when you're driving the car. The attenuation from the vibration from the engine mounts is stellar. Uh, I was thrilled when I drove the first prototypes that I could not feel shaking in the seat, in the steering wheel, the shifter. Uh, it's dead silent when you're in the car. And it makes glorious noises, uh, and uh, it makes a lot of power, which is good. All right. <laughs> How do you keep the oil filter on? Cross bolted? What's that? How do you keep the oil filter on? Do you cross bolt it? Oh, the oil, I should mention that. We, we used to have the canister, the canister filter like they had on the C7. Um, we went to a cartridge. So it's a, that old, the, the paper cartridge now is inserted into, and I don't think I have a view, I can show you here on the display engine. But there's a, a plastic cap that you uh, spin on and uh, the plastic cap has almost no mass to it, so it never backs off. So when you change your oil filter, you remove the plastic cap, you take the cartridge, the paper cartridge out, put it in the and then it's done. It's solid, it will never fall off. We, we verified that. Great job. Thank you very much.